Hey, what's up everybody, Trovenet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. With the introduction of Ciri's journey in Gwent, her three cards also got a bit of a makeover. And the most interesting change to me was Ciri Nova. To make sure we're all on the same page, Ciri Nova now has an 8 power body and if your deck has no cards with a provision cost of 10 or higher, she also gains a shield, Resilience and Veil, making her pretty hard to damage or kill, aside from a certain Vincent van Hor Morlehem card. With Resilience, she can also be a great way to start a round with an 8 point advantage. Because of this, I wanted to make a fun deck around her and her alone, especially considering the restrictions she imposes. After some experimentation, I went with Skellige. Now, Skellige is not in the best position at the moment, it's Warrior Archetype is currently still overpowered and I know people are sick of it. For that reason, this deck does not go for that archetype. We can't even include most of the powerful cards that those decks usually employ because of the restrictions put on by Siri Nova. No, I went for something that is a very solid counter against warriors and random damage in general. Self-inflicted damage and healing. Welcome to the cult of Siri. To be clear, today's deck isn't the most powerful deck at the moment, but instead counters a lot of other decks that are considered strong meta decks. It has three main mechanics that work in tandem. First up, you have damage soakers, units that can either take some punishment or actively benefit from being damaged. Secondly, we have the friendly fire units, the units and cards that allow you to damage your own units so you can benefit from the effects yourself without having to rely on random damage from your opponent. This category also includes our leader ability, Ursine Ritual, giving you 5 charges to deal 1 damage to one of your own units every single time. And last but not least, we have the healers, support units that can mitigate the damage being dealt to your own units, allowing the damage soakers to keep on ticking. Get one of each on the board and you get to witness a beautiful cycle of pain, death and rebirth. But that's all fine and dandy, let's get into the cards themselves and how they interact. There's plenty of synergy between most of the cards in this deck. You can see the deck composition right here, so I won't go over every single card, but there are a few interesting cards in here that you might not be all that familiar with. I do like to start with a Tweersock Veteran. He has 8 power, but damages himself by 3 on the ploy. When he reaches 2 power, so on Berserk 2, he heals himself back up to 8, making him a great defender and damage soaker as long as he doesn't get destroyed by a bigger hit. Combine him with his Fallblood Priest and you already have some nice synergy going since the Priest will whittle the Veteran down while boosting himself until the Veteran heals up and the cycle continues. The Fallblood Priest is a great way to continually damage units you want to see damaged in general. Putting a Haymate Protector on the right side of the Veteran completes the loop since the Protector gets boosted by 1 every time the Veteran gets damaged, the, da the Veteran goes down to 2 health, boosts himself up to 8 again and the Priest benefits from all of the Carnage as well. The Protector also boosts himself when you play a unit next to him that damages itself on the ploy, so even if you play a Protector first, you will gain an extra point if you play a Veteran next to him. Other stronger targets for the Priests are Blue Boy Lugos, who dishes out 2 damage on a random enemy every time he gets hit, and the Skeleton Pals of Harold Houndsnout that have basically the same effect. They deal 2 damage to a random enemy when they die. Harold himself can also damage one of your own units by one every turn, so he's a very strong card to include either way. Olgierd von Everek can receive all the punishment you want since he can heal himself fully back to 7 every turn. If you want to shuffle the deck around a bit, you can even use his stronger variant that can't be damaged or boosted in any way, making him completely immune to damage full stop. Last but not least, we have Wildkarl, who starts out at 5 power, but transforms into a 12 power champion of Svalblood when he reaches 2 power. Something you can easily achieve with your leader ability or any of the other cards. The 12 power monster can also be resurrected later by using Sigdrifa's right, which also applies to Jutta, who can now be useful even if she damages herself by half her power. Because healing is what this deck does best. 
Let's start with a small one. The Heimei Herbalist can easily reach her 8 point cap in this deck by healing and then boosting a unit by 3 for both effects. The Heimei Flaminica heals all units on a row by 1 at the end of every single one of your own turns, basically negating the effects of any priests on her own. But by far the most undervalued card in this deck is Joanna. She has a 5 power body but can heal a unit by 2 on order. She gains an extra charge for this ability every time one of her adjacent allies is damaged, which can lead to some huge point gains in one go if you combine it with a lot of self-inflicted damage through Priests, Herald or your leading ability and then spread the healing around the board to any unit that might still be damaged. These healers can also keep damaging engines like the Light Longship and Drummond Berserker alive longer and negate their negative effects. And alongside all of this is of course Siri Nova herself. If you manage to keep the upper hand in the first round, you don't really need her per se. If you happen to win round one early and end up with 8 cards in your hand or more in the second round, don't hesitate to play her and pass to gain an advantage in the last round if your opponent doesn't manage to kill her. The same applies when you lose round one. Play her in round 2 when your opponent passes to instantly gain an advantage going into the final round. On top of all of that, she synergizes very well in this deck because of her high base power, allowing her to be healed significantly and shielded which can take a hit from something like not the Callus, for example, giving you 4 damage basically for free. The final big combo in this deck that you should keep for the final round is Artis. While he's on the ranged row, he will damage any unit that is played by half their power, including your own units. Since we benefit from self-inflicted damage, we don't really care all that much. We either heal it off or benefit from it immediately in the cases of the veterans or something like Vildgar. I usually protect him with Covenant of Steel first since he's pretty vulnerable at 5 power. And he's also a row locked unit, so if he gets moved, he also loses his ability. But keeping him alive gives you a huge advantage. Especially against monster decks that usually play high powered units, damaging them for half that power can be devastating. One power spying units also get destroyed when they're played, making them no longer targetable for further use by Nilfgaard decks. All this makes this deck actually pretty versatile as a bit of a surprise. Monster decks suffer because of Artis, you can survive and even thrive off of random damage decks such as Skellige Warriors and Northern Realm Siege decks, and the restrictions imposed by Siri Nova often give you a hand filled with golden units, since we are restricted to only going below 9 provision or 9 provision or lower, giving us a very golden stuffed deck, since we don't have very high provision cards, so we can spread that out a little bit. That also indirectly counters assimilate decks, since there are often no bronze units to copy by the Duchess's informants. It's especially surprising how well this deck works against Skellige Warriors, because of the survivability of all of the units. Let's look at an example of just this situation to prove my point. Now we've probably seen this matchup against the second winder a hundred times by now, so you know what to expect. During mulligans I try to have at least one unit of each category I just described, so a damage soaker, a unit that can deal damage to my own units, and a healer. If you can get Siri out of the deck, even better, but we don't get her just yet in this round one. Our opponent starts off with an Uncrate Longship, but as stated before, we don't really care about getting damaged. We play one of the veterans to tank the hit, which immediately gets taken out by a stunning blow. Slow start so far, but we have another veteran, which we follow up with a priest to get our loop going. The Drum and Berserker played by our opponent hits the Veteran again, which heals to full in one go, so that's back to 8 power. The Berserker is also down to 4 power, so we take it out with a stunning blow of our own to negate the transformation it would have undergone in the next turn. After that, the first Greatsword of the match is played, and it is in a pretty good position, while we don't have any way of taking it out quickly. We try to get out of a bad spot we're in with Herkia, but a Giga Scorpion Decoction both takes out our beefy priest and boosts the Greatsword up to 11 power. A gap we won't be able to bridge in this round, so it's smart to pass now. 
For the second round, we would really like Siri. Our first mulligan gives us Champion's Charge, which will come in handy in the final round to take out a beefy greatsword. So we make the decision to go without Helix for now, and in a stroke of dumb luck, our last card is Siri. Our opponent expectedly passes, so we get to play Siri in full, giving us a nicely protected 8 power unit as a head start in that final round. With the Flaminica joining our hand, we basically have everything we need. She can heal off the damage that Artis does, so we have an almost ideal hand going into round 3. Joanna would have been better, but we'll deal with it. The Covenant of Steel, as I said before, goes first, so Artis is defended in the next turn, since we want to play him as soon as possible to max out his potential. With Artis set up, our opponent tries to go for our defender, but can't quite kill him in one go with one stunning blow, allowing us to also continue our setup with the Flaminica. The healing is not enough to shield us from the Gutting Slash that takes out the Covenant of Steel in the next turn, however, leaving us pretty exposed. Blue Boy Lugos is up next, immediately transferring the damage from Artis to the other side of the board because of his ability. The Flaminica also heals him back up to 4 power, so we can benefit from his ability even more later on. Another Blood Eagle from our opponent sadly takes out the Flaminica and plays Tirgvi, who puts Rupture on Artis, setting him up to die at the end of our next turn. Luckily, we still have Murderome, which boosts Artis up to 11 power, leaving him at 6 after Rupture triggers. Our opponent's veteran units really start to suffer from the fact that Artis is still alive, dishing out 3-4 to four damage each turn, while we set up a priest to start whittling down what little power Blue Boy Lugals had left. Which prompts our adversary to play the big man himself, Harald on Crate, replaying the dead greatsword from before and dishing out some more random damage, which in turn boosts up the greatsword. Things don't look that good, but the Greatsword can be ignored for now since we can take it out with Champion's Charge later, as long as it's not defended. We play our own Herald next along with his three deadly pals, followed up by Hemdal by our opponent, which wrecks our back row, but in turn deals more damage back to our opponent because it hits all three of the pals and Blue Boy Lugals. This chaotic play looks very impressive, but while we took 7 damage, we also dealt 10 damage back, making the net gain for our opponent minimal. Our Heimei Protector needs to go next, we'll keep Champion's Charge for last, and I'm waiting till the Greatsword hits 13 power before playing Jutta for her full 12 power. This is very important. The Protector also negates a lot of the random damage we get hit with in the next turn, again proving the point of this deck. Random damage does nothing in this deck. Jutta goes up next, and since we don't have any valid targets for our leading ability anymore, that's a mistake on my part, I dump them all on Siri. The Protector negates the damage and we get a 6 point abomination in return, so all in all, not too bad. To end it off, we use Champion's Charged as expected to kill the massive Greatsword, and even our opponent's Morgvark, which would have boosted the Greatsword immensely, can't bridge the gap we've struck anymore, which gives us the win against the strongest archetype in the current meta, with what can arguably be described as a bit of a niche archetype. An alternative way to play Skellige, which is both fun and surprisingly powerful at the moment. It won't give you huge win streaks to be honest, but if you're looking to play something different, give this deck a try. You might be surprised by how effective it is. And that's it for today. What do you think about the Cult of Siri deck? Got any other ideas on how to improve it or any new ways to outthink your opponent? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out because that's what we're here for after all. If you're raking for more, I have plenty of videos on the channel. We just did a video about the new journey, the so series journey, and I also have uh, videos on a, v a still very valid new religion deck, so a priest uh, syndicate deck, and of course the Shiro Blamo uh, Precision Strike Squiatel deck, which is also still very, very viable. I'm almost up to pro rank again with that deck alone. If you're looking for something a little different, I also have videos on the very cool secrets that are hidden in the art of Gwen cards. I actually have two of those, or any of my broader analysis videos on uh, certain game mechanics and more. You can check that out on the channel uh, if you're interested. Any feedback, as always, is greatly appreciated. Check me out on Twitter at @trophynut. that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? 
all feedback again is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Ditch. Goodbye.